In this video, we're going to explore another family of functions problem, this time involving an exponential. Notice the x variable is here in the exponent, but we also have two parameters or pseudo constants a and b inside the formula as well. What we'd like to do here, what we're asked to show first, is that assuming that a and b are positive, that gives us some parameters to work with, that this function is both increasing and concave down for all x. Well, of course, we're going to show things are increasing. That's going to be the first derivative information. And we're going to show that that's positive all the time. And to show that it's concave down, we'll need to show that the second derivative is negative. All right. Of course, we should call this g of x, because that was the name of our function this time around. So let's take a look at what the derivative looks like. We have an a multiplier. That stays out front. It's a common multiplier. It's a product of a constant. x is the only variable for the derivative. So we treat a as a constant. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of any exponential is the same exponential again times the derivative of the inside, or the derivative of the exponent. x is the variable. Negative b is a constant multiplier. So we get the negative b with that. If we multiply out the negative and negative, we get positive. So we're going to have a times b e to the negative bx. Now we can do a quick sign analysis on this. We were told that a is positive. We were told that b is positive, And exponentials are always positive as well. And so we have that g prime of x is always positive. Better yet, being more precise here, is positive for all x values, under the assumption that the a and b in our formula are positive as well. All right, that wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at the second derivative. Here's the first derivative. a and b are constants that are multiplying. We can just copy them down. Then we have the derivative of e to the negative bx. Again, the derivative of any exponential is the same. Then we take the derivative of the exponent. And there we're going to get a negative b. And that ends up being negative ab squared e to the negative bx. If we take a look at the signs there, we are told a and b are positive. Exponentials are always positive, but this time we have a leading negative value out front. So when we multiply all these out, we're going to see that g double prime of x is negative for all x values. There we go. That means we know already that our function is increasing all the time, but it's always concave down as well. The next thing is, what else can we say about the function? We don't always have to talk about the derivative. We can also talk about sample points. And that's as simple as plugging in x equals 0, say, to get a good starting value. That'll just be e to the 0. But e to the 0 is 1. So we're actually going to get a times, oh, that's nice and easy. g of 0 is 0. So we already have an anchor point for our formula, or for our graph, rather. That's going to be the origin. Whatever graphs we're drawing are going to go through that point no matter what a and b are. Next, what happens in the long run? As we move out to larger and larger x values, take a look at this formula and ask yourself, what happens to the graph as x gets larger and larger and larger? We'll pause the video for a moment to let you give that a try. All right. Well, we want to know the limit as x goes to infinity of a times 1 minus e to the minus bx. We know that x is getting larger. That's where the x is. This whole thing is going to correspond to an exponential decay for that one term. We have e to the negative larger and larger numbers. And that means that whole term is heading towards 0. And so when we evaluate the limit, this term is going towards 0. We'll have a times 1 minus that 0 in the limit. And that gives us a as the long-term behavior of this function. As we move out further and further and further, we're going to approach whatever the value of a is. With that, we can start doing some sketches. We know g of 0 equals 0. We know that g is increasing. We know that g is concave down. And we know that g is heading towards a as x heads towards infinity. With that, we can sketch some members of the family. So let's imagine we draw a horizontal line here at 1. If we know that we're approaching a, 
we can draw a family member that approaches that is increasing but concave down, like so. That would be a equals one. We could also draw another one that would approach, say, two up here. That would be a graph that would correspond to a equals two. And we could also build taller ones as well. What about the b value? Well, the b value has to do with the rate of decay of the exponential. So we might find is the bigger the b value, the faster we get to the horizontal asymptote. So as we go this way, that's what we would get as we increase b. We're going to get faster decays and getting closer and closer to the asymptote earlier. And so right away, we can get a number of different family members that, again, all share the same property of this increase in concave downness, having an asymptote. The asymptote's dictated by the value of a for the family member and the steepness what's happening at the initial decay is determined by how large that b value is. Of course, we also have even shallower ones if we had really small b values. And so that kind of comparison, that kind of study of the first derivative, second derivative information, and now some limits and some values of the function at particular moments, those can all be combined to generate quick sketches of graphs and identify the common features of these graphs in a complicated family of functions.